and welcome back to the How to Podcast series. Glad to have you here. Big shout out to amazing people who've been sending me messages through SpeakPipe, through my Buy Me a Coffee link. I'm getting so many comments coming back from you listening while you're doing whatever you're doing. Hi, Gary. It's amazing to to put out a podcast in the world and hear back from you. And my goal for you in 2024, no matter if you have one episode or a 100,000 episodes, is to get you more engagement from your audience so you can feel and experience the joy of your listening audience reaching out to you to encourage you, support you, give you feedback. I'm on a mission to help you do that this year. And if you need help with that, and you're like, Dave, I would love to hear from my audience, then I'm asking you to do one thing. Right at the beginning, and I know, what, yeah, at the beginning of the podcast, I'm asking you to do something. You can hit pause on this if you wish. I'll wait. Okay, I'm still here. Okay, so uh, hit pause and, and leave me a message over on howtopodcast.ca. I would love to hear from you. And maybe we can set up some time together. Free of charge. Doesn't cost anything. Just your time. Let's get together and work on how we can get you some more engagement or any engagement if you haven't heard from your audience in a long time or ever. I would love to help you with that. How to podcast.ca. There's a calendar link right there on the website. Click it, put some time in my calendar. Let's get together. And um, in the comment section, one request, just put in there. Um, feedback from my audience or something like that in the comments so that I know that's what we're getting together to talk about. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, today. Yes, today. Let's get on to today's stuff, Dave. Come on. Yeah, today we're going to be talking about something that I think is quite interesting and I hope this helps you as well. But I want to talk to you about, and my title for today is The Foundations of Podcast Success. Mmm, success. Navigating quality content and patience. Oh, okay. Here on the How to Podcast series. Here we go. Okay, so you're a podcaster, just like me. Welcome to the club. There are two fundamental pillars for your podcast that you really need to focus in on this week, in your next recording, this month, this year. Two fundamental pillars. Okay, think of those big pillars in, in Rome and, you know, the, the huge, big buildings, massive pillars. You can't wrap your arms around them. These big, tall, soaring, amazing structures. These are the two things that I'm thinking of we need in our podcast. And it's important to have these because it'll lead to a, a successful podcast. And these two pillars are, are you ready? Quality content. Wow, this is really a mind-blowing day. Yeah quality content. And the second one is patience. It is crucial to ensure that what we are currently producing in our podcast actually merits being promoted. And the other part is that we need to maintain realistic expectations regarding the timeline for achieving success in our podcast. Quality content is key in every episode Every time you come to the mic, every time you interview your guest, every time you press publish on your podcast episode to the world, how, how much, how is your quality level in your podcast episode? Are you happy with what was discussed, how it was presented? Did you get your message out? Do you feel like you hit the target? Making a subpar product is really not going to help your podcast grow. You can do an episode every day and put it out for 365 days out of the year, just pump out these episodes. But if no one's listening to them, it's that whole tree falls in the, in the forest thing. Right. Uh, so yeah, like really is you're not really connecting with your audience. The content's not connecting. You're not building community because the content might not be as rich as you think it is. And your audience is the ultimate determining factor of whether or not your content is good or not. You might think it's amazing. 
or I might think that I'm amazing at a certain task. And other people would say, Dave, you're really not that good at that. It's all kind of in the eye of the beholder, as we hear, right? Yeah. Your content lives and dies by the opinion of your listeners. Some people will quietly just leave and not come back to your show if the quality is not there. Some people will reach out and go, Dave, that was really, you owe me 40 minutes for that one. I didn't get anything out of that. So you really need to think about how your how the quality of your podcast content, how it lands with your audience. Before we embark on a journey of podcast marketing, it's really important that we look at the content and make sure that the quality is there. What defines quality content? It must have the following attributes. Okay, you ready? Okay, first, it has to be valuable. Each episode should offer something beneficial to the listeners, whether imparting new knowledge or skills or providing entertainment, satisfying someone's curiosity, being a distraction in life. When somebody just had a bad day, your podcast can be that. It can be connection. It could be community. It could be they just like hearing your voice and they build a friendship virtually with you as a podcast host. You just become part of their day. That brings value to the audience. You could be reading the back of a cereal box. They won't care. They just like the fact that you show up on their phone on a regular basis and they get to press play and get a little insight into you as a host. That might be it. They might actually not care about what you're talking about. Oh no. Yeah, it might just be that. So your podcast content needs to be valuable. It also needs to be unique. Your podcast and your perspective should contribute something to a, a new insight, a, a new look, a, a different opinion, something that makes people go, wait a minute, I'm going to rewind that section. I want to, I want to, I want to take that in again. I, I never, I've never thought that way. You need to access your distinctiveness and use it for your advantage by comparing against others in your niche and refining what makes you different than all of the other podcasts about the topic you talk about. Okay, so let's pause here. The How to Podcast series, how is this different than all of the other podcasts about podcasting? Well, there's podcasts about podcasting that say things like women are good at technology and that men primarily are are better podcasters. And I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Back that up there, buddy. What did you just say? Uh, that doesn't sound at all appropriate or truthful at all. So I, I don't agree with that one. So I'm like, okay, time to move on from that podcast. I've heard podcasters who give really bad advice because A, they've been doing this forever and they don't know what progress is. And they don't understand that we're all moving forward to a better version of podcasting. Or they're brand new and they don't really know what they're saying. But they read a book, so now I'm an expert. And they don't even have a podcast. But they're a guest on a podcast telling me how to podcast. Yeah. It's kind of, there's a picture I remember seeing of like a 20-something person holding a clipboard. They have a bright, shiny, new construction vest. Their hard hat doesn't have a single sticker mark or anything on it. They look like they just walked out of the store with a new outfit and they're holding this shiny clipboard and they're looking at a bunch of people from the trades who are dirty, uh, obviously look like they're annoyed because they've been taken off their last job to go meet with this clipboard person. And it says, <laughs> there's a script, there's a pic caption above saying something like, well, everyone, according to my clipboard, you're all not doing your job right. Hmm. Can we go back to work now and can clipboard person just go back to their desk? Yeah. I kind of get that in podcasting sometimes where, hey, uh, I've been I've been podcasting for a day and a half and here's what I think. Well, you're definitely entitled to your opinion, but we need to do some some time in the trenches. I think we need to spend some time working in podcasting, 
understanding the new wants, trying, succeeding, failing, building it up. It's going to take a while. And I think we're afraid of the investment of time. We're going to get to that in a moment. But your podcast needs to be unique. That's really important. It has to be valuable, unique, and also your podcast needs to be engaging. Your podcast must capture and retain. See, there's a, that's a key point. Retain the audience interest. If current listeners aren't consistently engaged, they're not listening to the entire podcast. Right to the end of your show, not just the first one minute which then counts as a download, but congratulations. The rest of your 39 minutes was not even heard because they bounced. Congrats, you got a stat. Ooh, look at you, one-minute podcaster. <laughs> the, yeah. You want your audience to stick around. You want them to stay to the end. And the quality of your content will keep them to the end. It's when you start adding in fluff, we start when we get off topic, when you run out of things to say, but you want to run out the clock, like we see uh, so often in the world where people just want to talk their way to the end of the clock to make your podcast more engaging, you got some homework to do. Study similar podcasts, study podcasts that format themselves the way you do. Are you an interview podcast? Then compare yourself to another interview podcast. If you're solo hosted, listen to a solo hosted podcast. And again, remember my little trick is to pick a, t a podcast topic that you have no interest in the content. You, you, you're not, you're not getting going to get distracted by great conversation about something you love and forget the whole process of doing this comparison to find an engagement. Pick a podcast about something that you know nothing about or would ever be interested in, but then do a microscopic focus on the host and the show and the format and the questions, the opening, the closing, the middle, and just kind of deconstruct and go, what things can I take from how this podcast is structured that I could take back to my show to make it better? It's a great way to, to be very objective, 30,000 foot view, that kind of thing, and look at this pod, podcast and go, yeah, there's elements of this podcast I really like. There's elements of this podcast that I won't do in my show because it doesn't serve me or my audience. So pick a podcast, go through your app, your phone, your web page, whatever, and just go look at a bunch of different solo hosted podcasts, if you're a solo podcast, and grab something you're not interested in, listen to it, and then start deconstructing it and going, how did they do what they do? And what can I learn from it? It's a great way to, to do your research and make your show better and make your show more engaging. The most effective long-term strategy for podcast growth and promotion is really rooted in providing genuine value. There's lots of gimmicks, there's shortcuts, there's people out there that would love to take your money to make all this happen for you. Uh, it's You're going to see it in your inbox once you're a podcaster. It's going to start showing up. Uh, all your social media, your Instagram, your Facebook, they're out there and they're looking for your money and they would love to take your money. <laughs> they really, really would. With all these gimmicks and shortcuts, though, they all kind of seem to lead to short-term gains. And they're not sustainable. They're not long-term. Rather than chasing fleeting market trends and, and the hot topic of growing your podcast in a certain way, which changes regularly, we need to focus on creating value through authentic relationships and high-quality content. To that end... I'm going to take a little break here for a second and share with you a message from one of my listeners. Just to show you what it feels like. And we talked about this at the beginning. How fun it is to hear from a listener. Here's a message from Gary. And uh, we're going to be working together on his show and helping him grow his podcast. and Getting him to where he wants to be. But here's a message that Gary left for me on my speak pipe through howtopodcast.ca. Here's Gary. This is Gary from Healthy Vegan Living Podcast. I'm here to let you know I just used the Levelator. It's great. Thanks for the tip. For my podcast, I'm finally on episode 16. I really, really enjoy your podcast. And right now, I'm on number 113. I listen to it when I walk my dogs twice a day or when I have some alone time. 
Keep up the good work. Don't give up. I really appreciate all the tips that you give us. And I'll see you soon. Take care. Oh, I did place your name on one of my episodes, but I had remembered I forgot to mention out of podcasts. It will be on the beer episode one. Thanks a lot for your time. We look forward to seeing you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks, Gary. That's amazing. Thank you. Uh, Oh, wait. Gary's back. Here's another message from Gary. Gary, take it away. Hi, this is Gary from Healthy Vegan Living Podcast. I've been listening to you, Dave, out of podcast series number E209, where you said for me to call you and let you know if I listen to the very end of each of your episodes, which I do. I love your commercials at the end, and I always think they're very, very cool. I listen to you all the way to the end because sometimes you have gold nuggets at the end, and I love that. Anyway, I'm uh, responding back to you. I'm doing pretty good. i am still got my usual issues. It's a little dry being a single person. I think I have three followers, and I'm doing like what you say. I'm making videos for those three. So anyway, I wanted to let you know about that. Keep on doing the good work. You not only entertain me as I'm walking my dogs, but I mean, I listen to your podcast while I do my chores or when I have other issues that I have to handle, like cooking in the kitchen, going to the stores, like going through Sam's Club. I like to listen to you then too. All right. So I'm looking forward to your next issue. So I'm going to let you go. Thanks again. Thanks, Gary. And I can hear the dogs coming back from their walk, it sounds like. (laughs) <laughs> in the background at the beginning there, and Sam's Club. You know what? I don't even know. I'm going to have to check. I didn't even think we have Sam's Club in Canada. Mm. Anyways, thank you for the message. So that is what I'm telling you means so much as a podcaster to hear from your listeners, to know they're getting value out of the podcast, and they're listening to the end of the show. Like, what a great feeling, right? To be able to experience that as a podcaster. Like I said at the beginning, if you want to have those types of messages as a podcaster, let me know how to podcast.ca. I want to get together with you and help you with that. And what I'm going to try to do is put more of these responses into the podcast so you can hear people uh, promoting their show. Great way to do that, right? So now we all know about Gary's podcast. Um, But as well, uh, you know, hearing feedback and getting some some thoughts on the show, maybe how we can improve. You can do that over on my speak pipe link on how to podcast.ca again, Gary and to the dogs, uh, special treats for all the dogs. Thank you, Gary, for leaving a message. Appreciate that so much. So the next step in all of this that we're talking about is all around patience and why patience is important for a podcaster, especially for a new podcaster. I don't hear a lot of people talking about patience And I want to encourage you that patience is a big part of the success of your show going into the future. We need a little patience, as Guns N' Roses would tell us, and that's something we need in our podcast. Having an established foundation of quality content, which we've already talked about, is super important as we build our podcast. We're going to shift our focus to the second essential pillar. Remember those big pillars? Yeah, in Rome. Is patience. Just as Rome wasn't built in a day, growing a podcast audience takes time. If you go back to episodes 1 to 20 of the How to Podcast series, my audience was quite tiny. Quite tiny. Uh, No feedback, really, coming back to me as a host. But that didn't make me stop recording my next episode. If I hadn't heard from anybody to date with over 200 plus episodes here on the How to Podcast series. Would I still show up? Yeah, because I'm really passionate about helping other podcasters to step forward and step in behind the mic and share their message. And they tell us that only a small micro portion of our audience will ever respond like Gary just did. So if you only have a few listeners, a good chance you'll never hear from them. And that shouldn't make you stop podcasting. There is a silent majority that listens to your show. 98%, 95% of your audience, well, you'll never hear from. You'll, but they keep showing up. They keep listening. 
They might not respond and leave you a voice message like Gary did. But they're there. And for you to stop your podcast means that they'll never have the chance to press play on your episode in the future. So the best way to grow your podcast is to podcast. By being there on a regular basis. Again, I'm part of Gary's trip to Sam Club. <laughs> I'm part of Gary's walk with the dog twice a day. It's, it's People build you into their routine. It's true. But you have to show up to be part of the routine. And you be, need to be patient. It's essential to remember that many hosts produce content for several months, maybe even years, before witnessing any kind of significant increase in listenership or response from their audience. This means persistently promoting episodes, creating new content, even if the initial engagement is really microscopic. But you don't give up. Podcasting is a long-term endeavor. It's a long race. It's not a short sprint. Sometimes you won't even be able to see the finish line. Growing up in public school, grade six, seven, and eight, I was part of the cross-country running team. So we would run through forests, fields, mud, through rain, and snow, and sleet, and I think I was learning how to become a postal carrier just by, by doing all of this uh, long-distance running. And I can remember there'd be times, well, when you'd start the race, you could see the start line, but you had, like, flags and arrows marking out your route, but you had no idea where the finish line was You because you couldn't see it. And in podcasting, that's how it is. You, you can't see a finish line. If you're doing a 100-meter race, you can see the, the person at the end and where the target is. So you just focus on the target and run to the target. In long-distance running, in a marathon, the, the finish line is far away from where you are, where you start your race. Podcasting is just like that. You're not going to start your podcast and see a finish line. I've got two episodes, give me my million dollars, and I'm out. That's not how it works. Podcasting is a long race. And you're going to spend a lot of time talking to the wall, talking to a microphone, and hearing yourself through headphones before you're going to get a message like what Gary left for me. It's, it's, that's just the way it is. But you're never going to get to the point where your audience will can reach out to you and leave you a message like Gary did if you don't continue podcasting. Trust in the fact that creating a podcast is a gradual process. Creating an audience is a gradual process. Audience growth hinges on consistency and delivering compelling content over a period of time. There's no quick drive-through, fast lane, high occupancy vehicle lane on the highway. There's no shortcut. There's no skipping the line, butting in front of someone. It doesn't happen in podcasting. You might see people try that, but their podcasts usually don't end up surviving over a long period of time. It might take years. It really might. And you got to be okay with that. It goes back to many of the episodes I talk about in the past where what's your number as a podcaster? How many people would you show up for on a consistent basis? And you're like, oh, I have to have at least 100,000 listens. Okay, wow. I need 1,000 true fans. Okay. You have two episodes. And your last analytics look, you have five people listening to those episodes and they're probably... The same five people listen to both episodes. So you have an audience of five. Five to a thousand is a big is a big leap. And that's not going to happen overnight. Unless you bring fame and fortune to you and to your podcast and people know you elsewhere. Even then, it's not guaranteed that your 100,000 followers on TikTok 
care about a podcast. They might not even listen to podcasts. They like you on TikTok. Your Instagram followers may be like, meh, podcasters, meh. So don't assume that because you built an audience somewhere else, they're just going to migrate with you wherever you go. Podcasting is for a certain group of people. Some people get it. I have family members who think this is completely a waste of time for me to create podcasts. And they'll never listen to my show. And you know what? They're not my audience. So when we get together and do family functions, they're like, still doing that radio thing, Dave? Yeah, well, okay, whatever. That's what they think it is, but it's not. But I know you get it because you show up. I know Gary gets it because Gary left me a message. So I know this is resonating with you. And I know that there's some value coming from each episode. And I don't just throw on the mic and create something in front of you like one of those chefs that cook in front of you at the table and just make it up as they go. I put effort into this because I want you to get value out of this. And I'm still here. And that's the key to your podcast growing. Great content. Served on a regular basis for a long time, period of time. If you're not willing to commit to those things, you're going to have a hard struggle as a podcaster. And you really need to think your mot motivation. You need to think your end game and plan out accordingly. If podcasting is for you, there's no shortcuts in life. And there's no shortcuts in podcasting. Sign up, do the work, show up for your audience. And if you want people to respond to you, like Gary's done for me so many times, Gary, I really appreciate you for making time to do that. So kind of you. Show up, do your best, and your audience will respond. Guaranteed. And you can get a better response than people promise you by doing the work. It's all up to you. Your audience is waiting. Hit record, publish that episode, and get better on the next one. Thanks for listening to the How to Podcast series. Visit howtopodcast.ca and I'd love to hear from you there. Take care. Hey, thank you for sticking all the way through to the very end bittersweet that the episode is over and that we're done for this episode but you will come back and I will come back and you know there's you and me and we're one big happy family here at the How to Podcast series far beyond being just pod pals which is fine but I'd much rather do do life together as family here and to that end a reminder as we talked earlier in other episodes as well that we do have a meetup group and you are invited I would love to have you come. It's free. We do them scattered throughout our calendar, different days, different times, because we have people listening around the world, like Cuba and Warsaw, Poland. Hi, Cuba. It's amazing how we can reach the world with a podcast. So through our meetup group, what we do is we get together. It's free for you. Cost me money, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. We get together. We meet other podcasters. We talk podcasting. And it's a way to get from behind the microphone sitting by ourselves, recording on our own and doing community. Podcasters need community. You need to meet other podcasters and just in a low key, fun environment, talk podcasting. So my challenge to you in 2024 and beyond is to get into a meetup group, find other podcasters, introduce yourself and make new friends. It's just like school all over again, grade nine. Let's meet each other and share the podcast journey. Go to howtopodcast.ca and click on all the information you'll find there around our meetups. And I'd love to have you there. Thanks for listening. Catch you on the next episode. Get out there and record your podcast. Take care.